Have you ever played a gotcha game where you are trying to be free to play, but then you go up against a whale who puts a ton of money into the game, probably because he borrowed his dad's credit card, and even though he's nowhere near your level of skill, he still beats you just because he has more money than you? Well, that's kind of how it feels like to go up against Colin in Advanced Wars. <laughs> so when I got a message uh, at Advanced Wars by web from a player calling himself a Colin main, uh, I just had to laugh, because saying that you're a Colin main in Advanced Wars, that's kind of like saying, you know, my favorite unit in Age of Empires 2 is the Cobra car. I really like it, it's very fast, it has a lot of hit points, and it really kills your enemy really quickly. I really like using this unit. Anyway, this guy proclaimed that he was a Colin main, and I could not resist the challenge. I was just like, you know what? All right, let's play a match. You play Colin, I'll pick another CO that's like kind of good, but nowhere near the power level that Colin is. And let's just see what happens. Let's see if I can actually beat a Colin main. And that's exactly what we will be doing in this match, ladies and gentlemen. I am playing Lash. Uh, I figured I needed to play a somewhat strong commander. I don't think she's anywhere near the power level of Colin. I rated Lash as a B rank tier CO in my Advanced Wars 2 tier lists. Um, and she's pretty good, you know, she has no weaknesses, which is really nice, and she has a really strong day-to-day -day power. For every terrain star she gets, she gets a 10% bonus to her fire powers. So, you know, it's quite simple. If your infantry is on a property, they get a 30% firepower bonus. If you're in a forest, you get a 20% firepower bonus. If you somehow manage to get your mechs into mountains, they get a whopping 40% firepower bonus. So, Lasha's day-to-day -day powers are very strong, and she doesn't have any weaknesses, which makes her very competent. Um, she has a very overpriced normal power that is not very good. Good. Prime Tactics merely allows her to move over terrain at no cost. It can situationally be kind of useful if you want your recons to hunt down enemy rockets, for example, because they can just go swoosh through the battlefield, not caring about terrain in the slightest. Can be good if you want to position your rockets into forest, for example. But what you really want to do with Lash is you really want to pop her superpower Prime Tactics. It is very expensive, but oh man, it is powerful. In addition to doing the same thing that her normal power does, allowing her to move through terrain at no cost, it doubles the terrain stars from all terrain. And this is absolutely ridiculous when combined with her day-to-day -day power, because not only is this going to be a massive bonus to her defense, and you know how strong defense is in Advanced Wars, but it's also going to passively buff her fire powers. So it's pretty much a massive bonus to both firepower and defense. Just to give you an example, if you put a rocket on a property, it gets six terrain stars during Prime Tactics, which means that not only is it very hard to kill, but it also has a 60% bonus to its firepower. And this is absolutely ridiculous. However, I am going up against maybe one of the most broken CEOs in Advanced Wars history. We got Colin, and let me just tell you guys, if you don't know how broken this guy is, he is insane. Now, he does get a passive minus 10% firepower on a day-to-day -day basis, which is pretty crippling. I mean, that is a pretty big weakness, don't get me wrong. And he gets a 20% reduction in deployment cost, which is pretty good, but that's not really what makes him broken. What makes Colin so broken is his normal power, Gold Rush. It has a ridiculous cost of two stars, which means you get it all the time, and he gets a 50% bonus to his total cash whenever he pops it, which just gives him a ton of cash. Additionally, Advanced Force by Web functions a little bit like Dual Strike in terms of its powers. So when Colin pops his power, he will not only get a 10% bonus to his defense like he did in Advanced Force 2, but he will actually also get the 10% bonus to firepower that he gets in Dual Strike. So this is actually an even stronger version of Advanced Force 2 Colin, which is going to make this a really, really tough fight. He also has power of money, but no one ever uses his power anyway, so there's no point in talking about it. Anyway, let's uh, take a look at this map, shall we? It's a really really cool map. This map is called At Last. That's literally the name. I'll throw a link to it in the video description if you want to go check it out for yourself. Probably one of the better maps I've played on, honestly. So both players starts out with two properties. I start out here in the north, and the Colin player starts out here in the south. As always, he's player two, so he gets an extra infantry. If you don't know why this is the case, this is basically something that Advanced Wars Bioweb does to offset the first turn advantage. It's a very good way to balance maps. Now, this map has a lot of properties on it, which I really like, you know, this makes Lash pretty viable. So I've actually gotten it confirmed that these uh, properties right here, these used up missile silos, they're actually not treated as cities in terms of candy slash Kindle's firepower bonuses. However, Lash still makes really good use out of them because they still give three terrain starts. So Lash will still get a 30% firepower bonus whenever she takes engagements on top of them. There are also two comp towers here and they're very close in the center. So both players will be fighting over them quite a lot. Of course, you know, the bottom player will take this comp tower and the top player will take this comp tower, but 
If you, for whatever reason, forgo the center and you just focus on the flanks, then uh, it, you can end up losing your comb tower and that's really, really devastating. Each player has a neutral base that they can cap. The top player has this base right here. The bottom player has this base right here. So the, the bottom player is going to exert a little bit more pressure here, while the top player is going to exert a little bit more pressure here. So the bottom player has this airport and the top player has this airport, which offsets the base a little bit. Both of the HQs are also very exposed on this map. The uh, top player's HQ is here. The bottom player's HQ is right here. So if you're not careful, you can actually end up getting your HQ captured. So you got to be really careful about this. There are also two neutral harbors on this map along with two small ponds but due to these two shoals right here which will allow infantry to move past them uh, battleships are quite limited in their movement i think if i were to redesign this map i would probably take away the shoal right here which would allow the battleship to move here as well so you can actually end up seeing some battleships on this map but they're not very good considering they're limited by this movement right here but yeah, overall, there are just a lot of cool places to take engagements on this map. Lots of cool forests to hide rockets and artillery in. And by the way, guys, in this map, you will see just how incredibly useful rockets can be. A lot of people have complained I don't get enough rockets during my matches. You will see some rocket play here, guys. Trust me, it's going to be very satisfying. There are also two lab units on the map. Uh, we can check. I don't actually remember if I set any units as lab units. No, I actually did not. However, you may have noticed that I banned the Black Bomb along with the Stealth Fighter. The reason why I do this is because Stealth Fighters and Black Bombs against Colin just eat stupid. I mean, Colin can spam Black Bombs with reduced deployment cost and they're still as good as ever. And also, Stealth Fighters just makes Colin ridiculous because he can get them out so cheap. And the only unit that counters a stealth fighter is a fighter and that's just not good game design so I disabled that because I, re I wanted to go up against advanced force 2 Colin not dual strike Colin I also want to add that we're playing with a turn limit of 25 days so whoever has the most properties after 25 days have passed will win the game Anyway, let us jump into the game I start off with two infantries and the Colin player does the same he also builds two and uh, I start to move out to start and capture properties so you can actually I like this little uh, shoal movement right here it means you, you can move infantry across the, the the mountain so basically what this does is that it allows you to move your infantry faster to the center however vehicles still have to go around so it, it's an interesting way to design the map of course this this mountain will block the movement of anything that isn't a vehicle but you can also put indirect units here even though they're kind of exposed on the shoal they are protected from the mountain so it can actually be pretty good of course as lash you want to place your indirects in forests or cities to get that extra firepower but it is something to consider so I, once again, I build two more infantry. And um, one thing I really want you to notice here as the match goes on is just the value that Colin has. It's quite insane. Now, as you can see right here, uh, the value listed is actually reflective of the value of his units. So you can see right now he has a value of 2,400 because his infantry are cheaper. So the value does reflect that. And that's very important to know. So uh, he, he spreads out, he takes properties, and he moves past this property right here. I don't really know what he's going to do here. I mean, maybe he wants to try and get this property, or maybe he even wants to try and get my comb tower, which that's kind of bold, but uh, I do commend him for this. He gets a recon out. Again, Colin players can rush recons way quicker than you can, which is very annoying. But he is limited right now by the fact that he only has two bases. So that's kind of nice. So I move out, I take the dock. I don't really know why I did this. I was just, you know, I might as well. It gives you some income. I just wanted to some early game re uh, income. And right away, I go for the comm tower here. I sense that if he is a call in main, chances are he's probably going to spam a recon. So I want to try and get this comm tower as quickly as possible before he can interrupt it. And this actually ended up being exactly what he did. So I was, I was pretty happy about this. Uh, I uh, If I had delayed the capturing of that comm tower, this recon would most likely have been able to interrupt it. So, so there I build my recon. I decide that, you know, I'm going to try and punish him a little bit if he tries to be greedy with his captures, which is exactly what he ends up doing here. Um... I'm already going for this base right here. This is the first mistake he made. Uh, this infantry should not be in the center here. This infantry should go for this base. I always go for neutral bases first. This is uh, incredibly important because right now I'm going to have my base at least several turns before he gets his, which means I can build more infantry, which means I'm, my capture game is going to be stronger than his. So already I can sense that this is, uh, this is the first mistake this guy did. So he moves his infantry in. And uh, yeah, now he decides to go for the base. So... If he had gone instead, so the path that he ended up taking was one, two, three, four turns to get here. He could have gone uh, one, two, three, four. Actually, would have taken him as long. Never mind. I'm 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 stupid. Wait, let me let me check that one more time. One, 
two, never mind, never mind, I'm Mang's math, so one, so look, look at this, one, two, three, yeah, so he actually, he could have gotten this property an entire turn earlier, instead he went the long route. I don't know why he took this path, maybe he wanted to check if I was out here or something, I don't really know what he was thinking here, maybe he just changed his mind. And now he moves his recon in, he sees that I'm capping the tower, but it's way too late. So he's not going to be able to take that away from me. So I'm very happy. I don't see the recon, but I'm very happy that I went for this cap early on. So now I start capping the base. And I send out my recon. It's not uh, close enough to spot his recon. But at least I see that he's not capped the common tower yet. So that, that makes me really happy. Build more infantry. He uh, moves his recon into the woods. Uh, good move on him right here. He's hiding his recon. I do believe I saw it move though. So uh, he wasn't like... Because, uh, actually, no. Infantry has two vision. So, yeah. Actually, infantry has two vision. And he moved like this. Actually, I, I was not able to see it. But I did. Uh, never mind. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, this recon spotted it. I'm pretty sure I saw it. So, he goes for the base. I'm going to get my base one turn before his. And uh, there he takes the com tower. And, of course, I have a recon perfectly in position to interrupt that, so I'm very happy about that. And he goes for a second recon. This is something calling players can do quite easily. Their recons are so cheap. They, you might as well go, go two recons to your opponent's one. Uh, you can usually get away with it due to the reduced deployment cost, so this is really good on him. So here I go. I make sure to always attack from the plane rather than the road. With Lash, you want to be very sensitive to what engagements you take. Like, always, always, always check the terrain. Uh, you always want to try and maximize her firepower bonuses, so never attack from a road if you can attack from a plane. Even though it's just a 10% boost, every little bit helps. So, boom. I take this infantry down to 4 HP. It's uh, going to delay the capture of his comm tower by one turn. However, I am under no obligation that I'm going to somehow, like, interrupt this forever. But even if I could just delay it for a couple of turns, that's enough to be annoying. So I move up my infantry. I uh, want to go for this airport at some point, even though even though Lash doesn't get her firepower bonuses uh, on air units, uh, even if she even if her battlecopters are like above a city, she doesn't get the 30% firepower bonus because air units never get terrain stars. But Lash's battlecopters still aren't any worse, so you shouldn't hesitate to build them. Some Lash players are very stingy on building air units because they want to maximize their day-to-day -day bonuses, but I think this is a mistake. You definitely want to try and get battlecopters whenever you can. They're really good. So. Once again, I just continue building infantry. I fully suspect him to bring out a recon at some point, but I, I just, I decide that, you know what, I'm up against the Colin player, and he's gonna have an insane eco advantage against me no matter what I do. So I might as well be on the top of my capture game and try to get a strong economy myself, so I don't just com get completely overwhelmed by him. Against the Colin player, early aggression, in my opinion, doesn't usually work out, because he will just get units out quicker than you. Against the Colin player, I'd say definitely try to go for the eco game and try to capture as many properties as you can. So, to, so you try to at least bridge the gap a little bit between your two economies. Uh, if you try to rush Colin super early on with like two recons and a tank, I've never been able to really pull that off really well because Colin's units don't have reduced defense; they just have reduced firepower. So it's not easier to kill them, and as a result, trying to rush Colin it usually doesn't end well. So, he moves his recon in again, being very stealthy with this thing. Um, now he sees that I'm capping here, and by the way, this recon actually ended up being incredibly annoying. He actually used it really well. You will see why over the course of the game. So, here we go. He continues to cap properties. He caps, and will he join cap? Yes. So, he joined cap right there. That's really good on him. You always want to join cap. However, as you can see, I got two units in position to interrupt it completely. So, I was really happy about this. So here he builds his first tank, really solid on him, he sees that I have a recon, the tank is the perfect counter to the recon. So, so far he's playing really well, he's going for the airport. So here you can already see the advantage of being Colin. So look at the difference between our units right now. Just look, look at the difference between our value. 13,000 to 17,000. He has two recons on a tank out, I have one recon on infantry out. So, he has a recon here, and he has a recon in the center, and he has a tank on his way to punish me. That's insane. Like, that is incredible. So, if I had a recon down here, I could have interrupted this cap and prevented him from getting the airport. So, you see, already, we're just five days into the match, and just look at the, the presence that Colin has on the map. Like, that 20% reduction in deployment cost gives him such a good buff early on, and he hasn't even popped his gold rush yet. So, it's my turn. Of course, you know, we had we do have to keep in mind that I haven't bought units yet. So even though it looks like I'm massively behind, we also have to consider that uh, actually no, because it's it's the start of uh, day six. So yeah, no, our 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 value is actually just that different. 
Uh, this is incredible. 13,000 value to his 7,920. Like, that is that is absolutely incredible. Just look at that. Now, of course, he does start with an extra infantry, which means his capture game is a little bit better than mine. He has 7,000 income to my 6,000. But still, this is, like, just looking at this, man, it really strikes home just how good Colin is. So here, I go for the comp tower, and I'm able to interrupt it completely. Thanks to taking two engagements on planes right there, I was super happy about this. Of course, he has an infantry coming in, but and he's going to be able to ward off my units right here. But I've now successfully delayed this capture by two turns, and I'm really happy about that. Also killed an infantry, which is fantastic. So, so yeah, I continue to go. Again, I really just want to cap these properties immediately. I still don't know that he has a recon here. And uh, here I build my first tank, because, of course, now I see his recon. I need to get my tank out. Very, very important. So, day six rolls in, and he decides to go for his airport really quickly. And like Andy, he does know what an airport is. And here we go. He takes a shot at my infantry. He starts capping the comm tower. And he builds a second tank, because why not? And he destroys my infantry, which is really nice. Now, I can, of course, I am in a position to take another shot at this infantry, but it will most likely cost me my recon, and that is not worth it. 4,000 is a big investment to lose early on, and it's not worth it just to delay uh, his cap of the comb tower by one more turn, so. But yeah, just look at our, like, right now, I mean, I was able to bridge that income gap a little bit, uh, but still, he has 3,000 more value than me right now, uh, which is pretty good. And here I go for the airport, not knowing that there's a recon here. So I think I'm just going to get this. But of course, uh, that extra recon is going to be really annoying to deal with. So uh, yeah, I keep capping properties. And I pull my recon back because there, there, I, there's no sense in losing it. Even though it, it's very tempting to take a shot. If I had, if this infantry was here, I would have considered shooting down an infantry to delay his comm tower capture by another two turns. But since this infantry was not in position to do that, I decided to withdraw my recon. Always keep your recons alive. I put my tank on a city, and as long as this tank is on a city, uh, Colin will not want to touch this. This is essentially a combi level tank right now. It has 30% firepower and 30% extra defense. So whenever you can put your units on properties as Lash, man, she becomes incredibly hard to beat. And these, these two uh, empty missile cells right here will also be fantastic engagement points for me, so I want to try and utilize them as much as possible. There's also a lot of good opportunity for mech play here with these mountains in the center, and you really don't want to go up against Lash mechs. They are incredibly deadly. So yeah, I move my uh, infantry up, and here I build my first artillery. So against Colin, using indirects is actually pretty important, because here's the thing. Um, you need to get some cost-effective engagements to bridge the gap between you and Colin, and the best way to do this is to try and get some good value uh, artillery and rocket play out. Colin's low firepower means that it's harder for him to push through your units, so it's harder for Colin to reach your indirects in the back. He'll still overwhelm you with a sea of fodder, but statistically, it's a little easier to keep your indirects alive against Colin, and so I advise anyone that goes up against Colin, really try your best to get a couple of early artillery, maybe even a rocket out. Uh, you will really appreciate it once Colin's unit starts to roll out, and trust me, once you see that early game Colin medium tank, you're gonna be very happy you got some artillery on the field, because you cannot go up against a Colin medium tank with a tank uh, you need either a medium tank or indirects to deal with it. So, build more uh, infantry. Again, always build infantry, very important. So, his day rolls in. And he finally finishes taking his comp tower on turn 7. Overall, I wouldn't say that my delay did that much to him, because we haven't taken that many engagements yet, but at the very least, I've succeeded in being kind of annoying. But overall, we've traded an infantry for an infantry here, so it's not really a big deal. So, if I could delay it even further, that would have been good, but yeah. So here comes the recon, and I'm very puzzled by this, honestly. He decided to, to block the airport. Uh, I think I would have preferred to just take a shot at the infantry. Uh, I think, I don't know what he was thinking here. Maybe he thought that maybe there were another infantry here. So he thought that if he stopped to attack my infantry, I would have just taken the airport anyway. But no, he should have seen it, because he had, he had a recon in this area, and the recon had crazy vision. So I don't really know what he was thinking here. Annoying as hell, for sure, but it would have been even more annoying to lose the infantry, so... So yeah, he continues to cap. I have a bit of an income lead on him right now, but I do believe he'll be able to bridge that pretty soon. So he moves in more infantry, moves in his tank. He's playing very defensively here, which I understand. He's playing as Colin, he doesn't want to take even engagements against Lash, I do get that. He wants to build up the fodder and prepare the death push, which is definitely a viable Colin strat. 
So uh, my turn rolls in right now. Uh, I don't know what happened to the recon right there. I think it. I think the replay didn't quite catch the movement. I think it just teleported. Let me replay and see if I can get it properly this time. Sometimes the replay will do weird things, like like just skip a skip an action and just teleport a unit. This is probably just a problem with the code, I imagine. Yeah, look at that. So he did move his he did move his recon and he did get it trapped, but the end the, it didn't it didn't display properly. But yeah, I was very surprised he got himself trapped here. Honestly, uh, he should have realized there was a unit here. I think he was. I think the idea was he wanted to move into the forest and take a shot at my my uh, my infantry to give his uh, recon some extra defense but honestly he should have realized there was an infantry here he should have just moved on the planes and taken a shot at me instead so here i move my second infantry out and i'm really annoyed at this recon right now because i have no way to deal with it i don't have the economy to get an extra tank out to deal with it so uh this is this is a really good move on his hand actually it would have been better if he shot my infantry but it, the way he's using this recon to annoy me is actually really good so I take the lab, uh, there's no point in taking the lab on this map. I think if you take both labs and there's no HQ on the map, you win. But there are HQs on the map. So basically these two labs are... I don't really know why I bothered to do this. I mean, it's not like... I could have tried and go for this property instead, honestly. But the only benefit you get from having the lab captured is that you will get vision on the lab. So if a unit moves over the lab, you'll see it, I guess. But... Eh, I guess. So, moving my infantry here. And uh, here you see the power of Lash... Comb tower plus property bonus, 40% extra firepower, boom, one shots a recon on a plane. I think I needed a slight good luck roll. I think the damage was like 98 to 109 or something. So uh, I needed a good luck roll to, to kill it. But yeah, no, that was I was pretty happy about just booming his recon right there. This is one of, one of the examples of Lash just being really strong. So I move in my recon into the forest right here. I'm expecting him to see it. But, yeah, I'm placing this recon in a bit of danger right now. But I want to see if he has this property right here. I want to see how good his capture game is right now. Right now, I am leading slightly, but he will make up for that next turn. So here I go for this property. Everything's good. I move my artillery. I want to be very careful with this artillery. I do not want to see... I want, don't want him to see that I have it. So I'm being very cautious. I plan to move it like this, and then I plan to move it like this. This is a very good position for the artillery because the call-in player will statistically attack from this side because you can see he already has a lot of units here. And he probably doesn't want to attack me here because I got a lot of properties here and I could have indirects here. But here is a really good position for this artillery. It covers a lot of important ground. And I just continue to cap properties. Moving my infantry. Here I take this. I just go, you know what? Screw this recon right here. Uh, I'm just going to start capturing here. You want to pull it back? Sure, I'll go here and take this property instead. So at least I, I take advantage of the fact that his recon can't be in two places at once. Even though I have no response for it at the moment. So here I get my tank out. I'm a little bit annoyed that I have to send my tank all the way over here. But I do have to get rid of this recon sooner or later. And here I build my first mech. Mechs are going to be very useful on this map. I definitely need good cost-effective traits against Colin. So I'm going to be building a lot of mechs on this map. They are pretty good, good as Lash. So day 8 rolls in. And uh, yeah. He has still has less income than me. But he will make up for that. And here he moves his recon down. He interrupts my cap. Really good on him. He takes another city. So now he is actually even with me in terms of income. So really well on him. He takes his lab. There's not really any point in doing that. But he does scout my recon. So this was really good on him. Uh, if he was anyone but Colin, he might actually have been able to one-shot the recon here. If he got a very good luck roll. But he would have been have to be very lucky. So... Small example of Colin's firepower reduction screwing him over a little bit now. His units are actually normal because of this comb tower. But they would have been 10% better if he wasn't Colin. So... So he continues to cap. Really good. He moves his infantry up here. He's not going to be able to interrupt this cap, which made me really happy. And he brings up his second recon, and he takes up my infantry. And at this point, I was like, oh my god, here it begins. Here the fodder begins. But yeah, so two recons here. Colin will always have more recons than you. This is just really annoying. Here comes the tank. And this was a really bad move on his end. Uh, I don't know if he... He should have known there was a tank here. I mean, I, I guess he felt really confident that, there, that he had two tanks in the area, but this is still very dangerous. Uh, and here he builds his first Battlecopter. So, uh, yeah. Um, of course, against Colin, the problem is that he doesn't have enough bases to deploy his units, and he needs to spam about a lot of fodder. So, if you go up against a Colin... If, if you go up against a Colin player on a map with very few bases, expect him to spam a lot of Battlecopters. And he continues to build infantry, which is very good. He's playing really well so far. So, a little bit of a look at our value difference right here. He's been behind in the capture game. Now he's actually in the lead in in on income. Uh, but he has a slight value lead over me right now, which is still pretty good. So, I move in. Uh, I actually just had to send my tank down into the center here. 
Um, I realized that with two recons here, I'm probably not taking these properties anyway. Uh, but I want more of a presence in the center, because I fear he's about to start pushing now. He has three tanks in the center to my two, so already he's outnumbering me quite heftily. So, I'm moving my, my artillery and this artillery. Mwah, it's going to be a very, very good artillery. Just, just you wait and see. So, I move my recon back. A little bit scary to place it here, but this is actually a bit of a bait. Uh, this was a bit of a bad move, though. Um, because, of course, if he moves his tank up here to shoot the recon, he will spot the artillery. However, if he does that, I will also get a shot at him from a property, which will do a lot of that. That's a 40% extra damage to a tank on a road. So, yes, he will sp spot my artillery, but he'll also probably lose a tank in the process. I was hoping that maybe he would pull this tank over here and attack me from the left, which would allow me to take a shot at my artillery. So, I was kind of like baiting him in. Yeah, come on, take my recon. Let's see if he actually ends up taking the bait. I also have this mech, which will, will soon be in position to punish any tank that comes near it. So, here I'm getting really annoyed at the fact that I haven't taken these two properties yet, because I know he's down here. So, I know that he will have an income lead over me if I'm not careful. Pull my infantry back, and I scout the area. I see that the recons are gone, but I know that they're nearby. So, I know that I'm not going to be able to take this airport or this infantry until I get some kind of tank in, into play. And again, I need my tanks in the center, because he's got such a presence in the center. And this is one of the reasons why it's so hard to go up against Colin players, man. It really is tough. So, here I build yet another tank. Probably should have an, got an Antair this turn, but I couldn't have known that he had a Botocopter out this early. But I probably should have suspected it. Build another mech and an infantry. And uh, I just, I don't move out here. I keep my tank entrenched on this property. I am not going to move out and get swarmed by Colin. I know that the moment he starts pushing, which will be very soon, I will be ready to meet him on my properties. I need to take advantage of the Lash Firepower bonus if I am to have any luck going up against Colin. So, day nine rolls in and uh, he has finished capping most of his properties in the vicinity. And here he sends his recon onto the airport, and again, I see this and I just go, Oh, this is so annoying, I don't have any response to this. And I know he has another recon hiding there somewhere, which is even more annoying. Here he tries to go for a sneaky HQ cap, but of course I was paying attention on his turn, so I saw that he moved up there, and I have a tank, so I'm not particularly worried. Um, he continues to cap his lab, which is not really, it's kind of pointless. And here he does something that made me very happy. He decides to take a shot with his tank, and I'm just like, ho, 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 look at that. Value. I was very happy about that. Uh, he starts to move forward. He's inching a little bit forward. He's uh, testing it out. And this was a very bad move on his end. Like, he knows I got tanks in the vicinity. He places himself on a bridge, which gives him zero defense, and it's right next to a lab. Guess what Lash is going to do next turn with her tank? Like, this very bad move. You never, ever, ever, ever place yourself on a freaking bridge next to a property when you're playing against Lash. Especially not when you know that there are tanks nearby. You're just asking to get your tank shot down. And for what? 5 HP off an infantry? <sighs> bad. And again, another crucial mistake on his end. He decides to get aggressive here, but look at what he's doing. Tank here, tank here. Two properties, two tanks. You'll see what, I mean, you, you can see what I'm going to do next turn, right? And it's going to be so devastating for him. This was probably one of the biggest mistakes he made over the course of the match. Colin players tend to play really recklessly. This is something I've noticed. This is why you shouldn't be a Colin main, okay? Yes, Colin is one of the most broken commanders in the game. And I guess that makes you feel really good. But here's the thing. You only play games at Colin... You're gonna suck. You're, you're gonna. You're not gonna learn how to position your units properly because you're just used to throwing fodder into the meat grinder and just overwhelming your opponent with a sea of spam. But here's the thing: if you if you throw away too many units as Colin, you will lose eventually. Uh, you don't have infinite money as Colin. It may feel that way, but you actually don't. So you lose enough effective engagements, and you're gonna start to struggle. So this was just a horrendous move on his end. He builds another tank, of course, because eh, he can afford it. Why not? Builds another tank. One, two, three, four tanks on the field. I have three. You know, <laughs> four tanks, a Botocopter, and two recons. I mean, just look at the presence he has right now compared to me. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. And here he does the first, another massive mistake with his Botocopters. He knew there was an infantry here. Honestly, moving this Botocopter right here, uh, terrible move on his hand. He's showing his hand. Now I'm just going to build an Antire and sewn this Botocopter out. Imagine how devastating this Botocopter would have been if he had moved it west. Kept it out of my vision, moved it like this, and then up like here. Imagine how much damage that Battlecopter could have done in this vicinity. 
and I would have had to build an entire hair. That entire would either have got, had to spend several turns trudging to the forest or having to go around here. It would have taken me like three to four turns to properly respond to it. And by that point, this Bottlecopter would have done so much damage. But instead, he moves it north. He knows I have an infantry here. He reveals his Bottlecopter to me immediately. And that prompts me to build an entire on the next turn. So again, second massive mistake he did. Uh, like, again, calling players, man, they all play the same way. They build units and they just go... Units go... And they just move their units. Like a little kid playing chess, just shoving all their pieces into the center, you know? Like, don't do this. Play smart with Colin. Don't treat your units like fodder. Yes, technically they are fodder, but still, play effective as Colin. Uh, this is not good. This is not a good play. So, day nine rolls in. Sorry, day ten rolls in, and uh, you can see that his income lead is quite cons is, is significant right now. He has a five thousand value advantage against me. Uh, in addition to, of course, having twenty percent more troops because they're twenty percent cheaper. So it's not just that you know when you when you look at this value difference, keep in mind that it does it does take his reduced price into account. So you can see that he just has a good value lead over me right now. He also has an income lead, and he hasn't even popped his gold rush yet. But trust me, guys, once we start taking engagements, that gold rush will, will be popped a lot. So here I move my infantry onto the mountain just to see what's happening. I know there's an infantry in the region. I don't really feel that. I don't really feel that threatened. Here we go. Look at this. Boom. A 9 HP off a tank. Bye-bye, Colin. That tank is useless now. And look at this. First engagement from the city. Boom, three hit points tank. Oh my god, I was so happy about this turn. I was so happy about this turn. I move my infantry out. Here the wreck. The mech is gonna arrive in time to do something, but so far it hasn't been very useful. I decided to sack this infantry just to get some scouting intel. I just want to see what's coming my way, and I'm very happy to see that it's just infantry so far. I don't see the recon, of course. And here we go. I move my infantry back, and boom, baby. Damn, look at that. Look at that. My god, I felt so good on this turn. I was just like... Hmm, I might have a chance. I might have a chance against this Colin player, man. Uh, this was, like, such a good turn for me. I took down three tanks, and I, I practically took no damage back. Full, full hit point tank, 9 HP tank, full hit point artillery. Like, at this point, I, I got, like, a surge of confidence, but I also realized that I could not be complacent, because I am going up against Colin, and trust me, he'll bounce back from this. You'll see. So, I take a shot on my infantry, utilizing a luck roll, and I kill the tank. Very happy about that. Move my infantry up just to get some scouting information. And I tried to get a good luck roll here, but it was not very feasible to work because my infantry was at half HP, so my luck values were also hard. But hey, I wanted to try. So, I move my mech down. And I also put my tank on the HQ. I'm baiting him to come attack me here because I'm like, come on, go ahead, attack my tank on the HQ. It is for defense. I'm also going to prevent him from trying to cap, so, and then I build uh, an entire. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he'll be stupid enough to attack my tank. I really am hoping he'll be stupid enough to try and attack my tank. So I move down, build more mechs. Again, mechs are going to be great in this match. I am not ashamed of mech spamming a little bit against the Colin main. This is fine. So his turn rolls in, and look at that. He already has his gold rush. Boom. Look at that. 24,000 money in the bank right now. That is disgusting. He can build a Neo tank. That is disgusting. You can build a medium tank. His medium tanks cost 19,000. Like, that is just disgusting. Look at look at that rich boy. Man. Someone needs to take his credit card away. And, uh, yeah, he'll put that money to good use. Not only does he have more money, but he also gets a 10% firepower and defense boost, which is incredibly good. So he starts capping more properties, sends out his tank. And there we go. Call-in rockets, man. They're so good. How much do they cost? I think it's like, uh, can I open up like deployment slots here? I actually don't know if I can. I, I'm trying to think. They cost 50,000. I think it's like 12,000 for a rocket. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I think I can cl click this base. Can I not? No, I cannot. So yeah, definitely build a lot of rockets as Colin. You can definitely afford them. So here we go. He moves in. He takes down my infantry. Really good job on him. Of course, I got a mech ready on the next turn that will do a lot of damage. He pulls his tank back. This is good on him. Just putting in a forest, trying to trap me with a 1 HP tank. He's not pulling it back for repairs, which is definitely wise. And he tries to take my property, which is, yeah, it's not going to work. But, you know, I commend him. And here he does his third big mistake. How on earth would he not realize I, like, come on, man. There's a base right there, and I've seen your battlecopter. Of course I'm going to build an entire. Uh, and, like... You're not going to do any damage to me with Colin here. This is going to get repaired up to 9 HP. I even took some damage, like, on his Battlecopter, and it's... Yeah, this was a big mistake on his end. He's basically just throwing his Battlecopter away. But again, this is what Colin players do, man. And again, he builds a second Battlecopter. Guess what? 
I will, I will have Antire in this region right now. These Battlecopters, unless you pull them to the west, they're not going to be useful at all. You've shown your hand. The whole value of Battlecopters is the initial surprise. That, oh, shit, he has a Battlecopter. Oh, no. Oh, no, it shot on my tank. Oh, no, it shot on my artillery. And then he pulls it away. That is how you... They're stealth units, basically. They're stealth units. They're like rogues in Dungeons & Dragons. They backstab, and then they go back into stealth, right? This is how you want to use Battlecopters. This is not going to work. These Battlecopters are just going to be zoned out and be completely useless. So... But he is doing a good job on the capturing. Uh, he has his airport. He's preventing me from getting my airport. I, ha I am a little bit better at him in the center here, which is why I'm tied with him in income. But he'll be able to uh, he'll be able to bridge that pretty soon. So yeah, uh, so yeah, he got a rocket, a battlecopter, and two infantry this turn. Really good. I mean, just look at his presence. I mean, remember, I have just killed three of his tanks, and he's still matching me in value. I mean, that's disgusting. <laughs> Takes a shot at my recon. I don't really know why he did this. He should have pulled this tank back instead, instead of just sacking it the way he is right now. So Daytane rolls in, and look at that. He's tied with me in income again. I mean, uh, sorry, in value. Of course, I haven't deployed my units yet, but still, I got 12,000. Last turn, he had 24,000 to play around with. So again, it's ridiculous. So anyway, so this is a little bit of a weird move here. I should have shot with my artillery first. I realized this in hindsight. Could have saved a little bit of damage on my mechs, but it didn't really end up mattering a whole lot. Um... Here, I decide to interrupt his cap. I don't want to let him get this. So I'm just deciding to get a little aggressive with him right here. So I'm taking a bunch of shots against him. A little bit annoyed here. I got a bad luck roll. I probably should have killed this infantry, but I didn't. And uh, yeah, I take a shot at his infantry right here. Didn't manage to interrupt this either, which is a little bit annoying, but here we go. Antire comes in. Boom. Bye-bye. Battlecopter. Yeah, it might be a cheap Battlecopter, but that's still a crippling loss. You really don't want to have your Battlecopter shot down by Antire. That's really bad. So yeah, he tries to take my comb tower. That's very bold of him. I don't know why he thought that would work. But yeah, no, I'm not going to let you get my comb tower, Colin. Sorry, that's not happening. So yeah, I move in. Uh, again, this artillery, uh, I didn't get to shoot with it this turn, but it honestly didn't end up mattering a whole lot. But yeah, I decided to move in right here. And I build a second artillery because I realized, hey, I'm going to need to keep being effective against this guy. So And this map is great for artillery, so why not? And I build more mechs because, yeah, mechs are good. So his turn rolls in, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, right now I do have a pretty good valley lead over him, but he'll be able to bridge that pretty soon, you'll see. So he moves his rocket in, this is a great position for the rocket, see how, see how much it covers, like, this is fantastic, and who cares, it has 10% less firepower, oh whoopee, the rockets still fire incredibly hard, so this is really good on him. He moves his tank in, this is a really good engagement on him, I was very sad about this, I should not have done this, so yeah, this I was really upset right now, it's just like, ah no, I'm throwing away this match, I'm throwing away this match. And yeah, he's doing a good job just pushing back against my aggression. And th now, finally, now he gets it. Now he gets how to utilize his Battlecopters. Of course, at this point, I already know they're here. So I'm going to build an Antire here next turn. But this is what he should have done right from the very start. If he had done this from the very start, man, he would have crushed me over here. But yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. I know a Battlecopter is going to come at some point. I am not worried at all. So again, he moves out in the center here. He's being very aggressive right now, which that's okay. He gets another good shot at my tank, which I, that's 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 good on him. So um, yeah, and again, he's being very reckless. This is a three HP tank, man. You shouldn't be throwing it away like that. Yeah, sure, he's getting some nice information with it, but honestly, I think I would have preferred to, to pull this back. Like, yeah, sure, he's a Colin Colin main, and Colin mains just throw away their unit like damaged toys. But still, I probably would have pulled this back. So he moves up. He's, he wants to go for the airport right now, and I definitely don't want to let him do that. And there you go, the Colin medium tank. I, this is insane. Like, <laughs> oh my god, how do you deal with this? I mean, I got two artillery, but still, it requires him to play really recklessly. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of medium tanks coming out in this battle. So just look at this shit. He's, he's, he's caught up to me in value. Again, of course, I haven't deployed units this turn. But you can see he's just... I was able to take an insanely good turn against him. And it's like Colin just keeps climbing back due to the insane value that he has. It's ridiculous. So again, I'm trying to take the city. I'm, I'm kind of baffled I haven't been able to take the city yet. Uh, and yeah, take out his tank. Of course, he sacked that. And now I move my artillery over here. I decide that it's probably going to be useful to have an artillery in this area. And I move my tank back just to take a little bit of a shot at his recon. You know, I, I realize it's probably not going to last for long anyway. But now I finally have my mech in this area. And this mech will pretty much do a good job warding away any recons and tanks in this area. Because this mech is just insane. He's not going to... He, he will not want to attack this mech. Absolutely not. 
And yeah, at this point, I am really feeling the pressure. As you can see, his units are like closing in around me. But that doesn't stop me from being aggressive. I'm not going to just pull back and let him uh, regain his momentum. I'm going to do whatever I can to just prevent him from taking ground here. So, yeah, I move my tank in. I have my Antar in the, uh, in the vicinity. I build another tank. And honestly, at this point, I should have built an Antar. I know he, I know he has a second Bottlecopter. Uh, at this point, I should have built an Antire, but I really wanted an extra tank. So, I pull my tank back to get it repaired a little bit. Uh, normally, not something I want to do, but I just... Again, I'm not just using this for repair, I'm also holding the position. Uh, you know, I want to make sure he doesn't swoop in and kill my tanks. So, I find his tank, I'm happy about that, I take it out. So, that tank will not be able to trap me anymore. And his turn rolls in, and he goes for his second property. At this point, he actually has an income lead over me, which is awful for me. I really need to do something. And here you go. A third bottom copter. <laughs> I mean, this is just so typical Colin players. They're just like, I don't have enough bases to build my units. Let's just spam bottom copters. This is, they all do this. They all do this. It's, they're so predictable. At this point, I knew he was building more bottom copters. So, again, this rocket being pretty useful. I mean, I realized that he has some kind of, I thought it was an artillery at first, actually. So I was just like, oh, man. Uh, but, of course, it ended up being a rocket. So, and yeah, here comes the medium tank. And at, and at this point, I just go like, oh my god. Oh my god, he has a medium tank already. And I don't even... I, I earn 15,000 uh, funds a turn, so I don't really have what it takes to deal with this medium tank. So I was really upset about this. But I kill another, or he kills another one of my infantry. And he starts capping my property. Really, really uh, bold move on his end right here. But yeah, as you can see, he's just pushing me completely back in this area. And at this point, I am really sweating. He moves his uh, Bottlecopter. I don't think I spotted this, but I, kn I know it's coming. Here we go. Tank, Recon, and he moves his Recon back here, which is, again, he's being very annoying right here, preventing me from getting used to see this. Really, really well done on his end. And yeah, he keeps he keeps up with me in terms of value, even though he took an awful engagement a couple turns prior. My Prime Tactic is it's coming up, and I'm very excited for that. It's going to be a very good power. Uh, I keep capping his properties. I'm sending my Recon. I need to get some Scouting Intel. I see the predictable Bottlecopter, and I know that it's coming. It's good. Um, and I cannot let him get that property, absolutely not. I get a really good effective engagement with a mech right here, so that made me really happy. And uh, I, I interrupt his cap. Start capping the airport, even though I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get it. But uh, I'm able to bring in my artillery. I, I reveal my artillery to him, but at the very least, I'm, I'm disincentivizing this medium tank from going here, which is, uh, you know, if he wants to go right here, he's going to take a very nasty hit. So, and here, of course, I have to build the Antire. Very important. I know there's a Bottlecopter coming. And I decide to... This is maybe a tad reckless on my end. I know I have an Antire here, and I know there's Bottlecopters in the area. Uh, but I decide, you know what? Let's try and apply a little bit of pressure on his comb tower. Because he is focusing a lot of his attention over on the left-hand side right now. And I'm thinking, you know what? Okay, if he's going to be that focused on the left, why don't I just apply some pressure in the center? That's gonna, that's gonna make him a little bit nervous at the very least. So right now he has to actually divert some of his forces away from the left to go to the center, or else I'm gonna get his comb tower. And he really does not want me to get his comb tower. That's gonna be a, a surefire GG for him. So yeah, move in my units. And uh, yeah, look at that. He still is a little bit behind me in terms of value, but he is slowly but surely ed etching his way back. Moves in here, I don't really see the point of this move. He knows I have units in this area. This is just stupid. He's just throwing away infantry right here. There's no point in going for a cap unless you can follow it up with some support. A, a cap on its own is not doing anything, especially not if I have units in the area, you know? That is just not a good play on his end. But he's defending his comm tower, props to that. He definitely understands the importance of not letting me have it. And this rocket is in such a good location right now. I didn't realize he had this rocket here for the longest time, but in my just look at look at how, how much ground this thing covers. This is incredible. Absolutely insane rocket right here. I need to find and get rid of that, or I will lose. Interrupts my cap, really good on him, moves in his recon. Yeah, it's just being really good here. He's throwing away a 2 HP infantry to get some intel. That's good on him. He should probably realize there's an entire coming, but still. Um... He pushes me back on the comm tower. Really good job on him. Takes a shot on my mech with his infantry. This is good. Whenever you get whenever you get a chance to engage mechs with infantry, definitely take it. Mechs are worth three times as much. This is always going to be very valuable. Even if it means you're throwing away your infantry, it's still good. So yeah, another... Okay, this is fourth Battlecopter. At this point, just stop it with the Battlecopters, man. Save up your money either for a bomber, which can do a lot more damage if played right, or just build medium tanks, because at this point, you know I have anti-air. 
So the, the battle copter spam is not going to work out anymore. But I, he just, I don't, I don't know why he kept spamming battle copters. Really weird play by him. And here, what the hell, man? What the hell? Wh why would you do this? I mean, I get it. You don't want me to get the cities, but you are just throwing away yet another tank. You see, there's an artillery here. Sure, the artillery would have destroyed the recon anyway, but now we can destroy a tank instead. That's going to be even more valuable. I mean, again, this calling players, man, they're so reckless with their units. It's insane to watch. And yeah, here I see the medium tank roll in, and I'm just like, how, how do I deal with this thing? How do I deal with this thing? I don't know. Builds an artillery and an infantry. Takes a shot at my tank. Good move on his end. So yeah, here I'm like, okay, what do I do with this medium tank? I can build a medium tank on my own. But first, let's shoot down his tank. Yay. That's like the fifth tank he has thrown away over the course of this match. So I'm really happy about that. I move my entire in here. Uh, this was a little... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, he, this was actually really bad on my end. Uh, okay, never mind. I realize. <laughs> I realize that he can do this. So that's why I pulled my tank back. So that's good to see. I take a shot, hoping to get a good luck roll, but the infantry was too damaged for it to happen. And yeah, I just go... At this point, I actually didn't know he had a rocket here, but this is kind of hilarious because I'm right outside outside its minimum range. <laughs> so this was like a... You know, uh, when I did this, I was like, okay, Max, this is a little aggressive, but it actually ended up working out really well. I took down his recon, though, instead of his tank. I'm a little bit... I don't know why I did that. I think... Maybe at this point, I mean, I played this ma match yesterday, so I don't remember exactly what I was thinking at this point, but I think my, my, my logic was that maybe as a call-in player, he hasn't built enough recons, or maybe he's only built the one in the early game, so maybe by taking out his vision, I can limit his aggressiveness. I don't know why I didn't go for the tank here, it's exposed on the road, but... Hmm. Oh, yeah, and that's why, actually. Yeah, that's why. I, I, I saw that I could attack with this tank instead, so I was like, you know what? Instead of tanking out one tank, let's injure one and take out the recon completely. And here I start capping, and I realize that my prime tactic might be coming up this turn, so I'm very excited about this. So I'm trying to kill units, seeing maybe if I can pop my prime tactics at the end of my turn. And I think I, I don't get it. No, I don't get it. I'm really sad about this because I just started capturing. But at the same time, if I save my prime tactics for next turn, I could try and get this comm tower. So it might actually not be such a bad idea. I don't actually remember if I got my prime tactics this turn or not. I think I might have gotten it. Uh, let's see. I move in with my mechs. I take a shot. Yeah, there comes the prime tactics. Actually, I did get it this turn. However, I don't actually think I pop prime tactics this turn. No, okay, so I actually decided not, I actually decided to forego my Prime Tactics for one turn. So, had I popped my Prime Tactics this turn, it actually wouldn't have given me that much. I would have gotten this property for sure, because when you pop Prime Tactics, you double the train star, so it's practically impossible to interrupt Lash's caps. However, I decided to forego my Prime Tactics and pop it next turn, because next turn, I'll be able to take the Com Tower, and if I can take the Com Tower and pop Prime Tactics, that will give me a huge lead. So I actually decided to to not use it this turn, even though it probably would have made it made me get one extra prime tactic over the course of this match. Anyway, here comes the second gold rush. Look at that! Look at that disgusting rich kid. Twenty nine. Get out of here. Get out of here. God, he has so much money. I hate him. Um, boom! Rocket being super useful. One shotting my recon. Ain't no thing. Taking away my vision. That's really annoying. Here he comes in. Uh, yeah, there's no more units here, and, uh, you know, he knows my entire is here, so this is a pretty good move on his end, but look, I have an entire here as well, so you are just throwing away another you know, battlecopter. Yeah, this is a weird bug. I don't know what's happening here. Yeah, okay, so there's, uh, yeah, the, the artillery was hidden, actually. Never mind, I'm an idiot. There was an artillery here. This is actually really good on him. Yeah, just a UI bug again. There we go. And, yeah, there we go. Now it's updated properly. He goes back to his uh, comb tower. He moves this uh, battlecopter to the left again. This is what he should have done from the very start. And again, look at this, he places a, an artillery right here. This is a really good spot for an artillery, actually. He's guarding his comm tower right now, and he has a rocket. So I realized that it's going to be pretty hard to push now. Uh, however, you may have noticed that he just gave me this property right here. I think there was a way for him to interrupt it. I'm not entirely sure he could have used the spotocopter, maybe. But yeah, he literally just gave me a property. And here's the thing, giving your opponent a neutral property, that's one thing. Giving your opponent one of your properties, that's an entirely different thing. That's twice the value. Because not only are you giving them a thousand extra income per turn, your income also goes down by a thousand. That's a huge power shift. Now, he is leading. He has 7, 17,000 to my 16,000. But once I cap this, it's going to tilt to 7,000 to me and 16,000 to him. And I will get these properties at some point. So he is foregoing an income lead right here. And that's not good, even as Colin. So... 
He's trying to interrupt my cap. He's actually succeeding, which is really good. But once again, man, throwing away units into the artillery meat grinder, I don't think this is a good idea on his end. Even if he takes a shot, it's not really gonna end up mattering. But he is pushing forward pretty heavily here. Now I did build a now I have I have a rocket here right now. I don't know if I commented on that yet, but I realized that the only way I'm gonna deal with this medium tank is to get a rocket. It's pretty much the only way, because my medium tank's not gonna reach it in time. So I'm gonna build a rocket on this base and hope that he's stupid enough to move his medium tank in. And he wasn't. So that was kind of sad. So my turn rolls in. Here is my prime tactic. Not the best prime tactic I've ever seen, if I'm gonna be completely honest. As you can see, not really gonna end up getting a massive value out of this, but at the very least, it's gonna make my units pretty hard to kill for a turn, so that's nice. So I move in my entire, get a pretty good shot at his recon right there, actually one-shotting it, thanks to the 60% firepower, so that was kinda nice. Um, honestly, I don't know why I didn't shoot with the artillery first. That was a bit of a mistake on my end. Actually, I think I'm, I wanted to move it away. So here we go, boom boom, Battlecopter eliminated. Of course, I didn't realize at the time. Look at this, I have two tanks here, and I didn't realize he had a rocket. I actually didn't realize that this rocket was here for like the longest time. I should have realized. I could have killed it so easily. Oh my god, this is, an, this is frustrating to see actually. This is the first time I'm actually watching this game post-production, so, uh, or after the match, so I, I, it's incredible to see that this rocket was actually here all along. I did not realize this. So here we go, I take a shot with my rocket, and that should have been an indication to him that there was a rocket in the area. Apparently, there was an error. Um, so he should know now that there might be a rocket here, so he needs to be very careful with his medium tank. So yeah, I move my artillery down here, I didn't realize there was a recon here at this time, uh, but I have my prime tactics pop, so I know that even if he has a tank in the area, this artillery has 60% increased defense. Actually, it's 70%, because you get a 10% defense boost with your superpower. So nothing is gonna harm this artillery. Not even a medium tank, so I'm pretty pretty chill about that. Take out his tank, and finally, 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 I might still be able, I might still actually be able to get these properties up in the top left here. I finished my cap, very surprised he let me get this, so now I'm actually tying him an income, which is really nice. And I, I don't know why I wanted to cap his lab, honestly. I was just like, eh, why not? Why not? It's not like this mech has any, anything better to do. Pull my artillery back, and I keep marching on his airport. Pull my tank. At this point, I realize I have to be a little uh, careful, and this is a cool example of something you can do with Lash's power. Like, my recon was here. Now it's here. I'm hoping he didn't see it, because if this recon can just stay here in this forest, it will be able to tell me exactly what's coming from this whip base, which is really nice. So, moving my mechs out, I'm kind of pulling back, but at the same time, I'm mostly keeping up the aggression. I'm not, like, fully committing to the attack, but I definitely don't want to let up either. But I do realize at this point that there are some indirects in the area, so I pull my tank back. So the next turn rolls in, and yeah, he's keeping up the aggression. To his credit, he's joining his infantry together for some reason. And he gets, uh, yeah, okay, so it looked like he attacked with his artillery there, that's not what happened. He moved his artillery and then the rocket fired, it looked a little bit stupid animation-wise. And he's placing his spatacopter over his rocket. I don't really know what the point of this move is. He could have put it here easily. He knows I have anti in the vicinity, but still. But look at his vision. He's actually not seeing my anti right now. So me taking out that recon earlier was actually pretty useful. However, he still gets a good shot on my tank. But imagine, he could have, if he if he still had his re a recon alive, he could have taken a shot at my anti and probably destroyed it. Instead, he had to take 3 HP off a tank during a prime tactics. So again, this is actually really good. He builds a recon, he realizes he needs vision. And look at this, medium tank versus lash artillery. Whee! <laughs> 4 HP. <laughs> and look, look at that. This was probably the biggest mistake he made in the entire match. He knows there's a rocket there, he has seen it shoot. So he's placing, he's placing his medium tank smack dab in the middle of the rocket. The rocket is on a base, which means it has 30% firepower, 40% because of the comm tower. This is gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt a lot. And there is one of his other biggest mistakes. Look, he had his gold rush ready, could have popped it. Of course, he already built units. This is why you always want to build units at the end of your turn with Colin. Never, ever, ever. He built his units mid-turn. Never do this. Move first, kill, then pop gold rush, then build. Very, very important. He could have had an extra gold rush. Look at this. He has his gold rush just sitting there. Of course, he can just pop it later, but still, it's something worth noting. So look at that. 7 HP off a medium tank. And what did he get in return? 4 HP off an artillery. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Hey, I even take an engagement with my mech. Why not? Got a good luck roll. Took 2 HP off the medium tank. This is great. Boom! Artillery shooting on his tank. Yet another tank sent into the meat grinder. And boom! Let's just kill this medium tank, because why not? This felt really good. Holy shit. You have no idea how good this felt, guys. My, I was feeling euphoric right now. 
and take his lab, because why not? Actually, I don't know if labs are treated towards properties for the purposes of a capture victory. I don't think they are, but it would be nice if someone in the comment section could confirm this, actually. So yeah, at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I just took down his medium tank. Um, take a shot at this. I decide, you know what? I'm going to put more pressure on your comm tower. I didn't realize there was a rock there. I probably should have realized that, but why not? And yeah, at this point, uh, moving my tank over here, taking out his recon, again, taking away his eyes in the area, moving in another Antire because I know there's a million Batacopters hovering about. So I'm just, I'm just hell bent on just punishing him as much as possible here. So uh, moving my artillery into the woods, it might be able to do something, who knows. And I build two more tanks to keep up the aggression. Day 16 rolls in, um, and once again, this rich little shit is just gonna get a million money, 33,000. God, I hate this power so much. Jesus Christ, so stupid. Uh, it takes a shot at my infantry. Again, it's always good whenever a rocket has to waste its turn attacking an infantry. Imagine if he shot this entire in instead. That would have been way more devastating. Uh, he's being very cautious with his movements right now. Leaving this tank out in the middle here, it's not a good move on my end. You should have put it here. So yeah, he's trying to take a shot at my artillery. Of course, I have a bunch of mechs in this area, so this just was not a good move on his end. Uh, he moves his artillery over here, but it's all on his own without support. He does get another really good shot off, shot off with this rocket. Man, this rocket. Imagine if I had caught it earlier. This rocket ended up being so effective. And here rolls in, and again, just, what the hell, man? Colin, are you for real? You just have so much money, you don't know what to do with it. Now, I, I will actually say, this battleship in this situation, actually not a bad play. Sure, it cost him 22,000, but he had freaking 30,000 in the bank. And look at how much this battleship will be able to cover. Like, the thing about battleships, though, they don't actually have more firepower than rockets. They actually have the same. So, essentially, he has he could have put a rocket on this for, uh, dock, and it would have been almost as effective. Of course, the battleship has one extra range, and it has more defense. Like, it's harder to kill it with a tank, but... I kind of get this. This is an interesting move. I mean, when you're Colin, you can do this shit, but yeah, I think I maybe would have been better for him to just build some tanks instead, because he's really seeding the ground to me right now. Here's another Battlecopter, because why not? I mean, at this point, <laughs> he's just spamming fodder at me. And again, this Battlecopter is finally making its appearance, but by, by now there is an Antire ready for it, so it's not really going to end up working out for him. And yeah, my turn rolls in. It's time to clean up, clean up some fodder in the middle here. I'm moving my units back a little bit because I see he has two uh, Battlecopters right here. But I also have two Antire in the vicinity, so I'm not worried about it at all. I'm moving in my my rocket now. I need to get it into a better position. It's done its job beautifully. It's taken out a medium tank. I'm very happy with this rocket right now. And yeah, at this point, I'm just pushing forward, joining up. And I decide, why not just cap this city? Let's just give his Battlecopters something to do so I can keep them in one place, you know? I start capping his comm tower and his city, so again... This battleship would have been really scary were it not for the fact that it needs to spend its turns fighting on infantry. And look at this rocket right here. Like, whenever you see a rocket with a flashing ammo sign on it, that's how you know this has been a good rocket, okay? If you ever run out of ammo on your rocket, congratulations. That was a good rocket. So, uh, moving in my anti air right now. Taking a shot at his artillery, because why not? And yeah. Just moving my units into position. At this point, I'm feeling pretty confident. And I'm hoping he'll keep these Battlecopters around, because my Antire are ready for action next turn. And I build another rocket. At this point, I realize I do think I see his battleship. I'm pretty sure. I don't know actually if I've spotted it yet, but uh, I realize that having some rockets in this vicinity is probably going to be pretty good for me. And again, I guess Colin, Indirects is the way to go, man, I'm telling you. So it takes on my one HP tank and he's sacking his own tank in the process. Not very good, but yet again, this 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 <laughs> rocket man, it has been so valuable this game. Uh, he uh, uses his other rocket to interrupt my cap, and good on him. He definitely doesn't want to let me get this cap. That would be very bad for him. And the battleship has to waste a turn attacking a mech, but that's not so bad. And yeah, here he does a really big mistake. He's moving his battlecopters in here to interrupt the cap. He should know that I have Antire in the area right now. He's throwing away two more battlecopters. But hey, man, he's calling. He can just build new ones, right? Dad will buy me a new Battlecopter. Yeah, this artillery vanished before it got killed here. A little bit of a UI bug. Alright, so day 17 rolls in. And uh, you guys ready to watch a rich kid get his toys broken? This is going to be fun. So finally, I start capping the airport on day 18. So that's great. He's done a really good job denying me these properties. I will give him that. He did really played really well in that regard. 
So there we go. Boom, one Battlecopter. Boom, two Battlecopters. 18,000 value. I mean, I guess minus 20% because you're calling. I'm too lazy to do the math right now, but it's still pretty bad. I move in my, my mech. I'm like, okay, if you're going to sit around here, I'm going to start threatening this thing. So you better shoot my mechs. I'm even going to take a shot at you because why not? And I move in another mech. So I'm like, okay, uh, you want to move away this rocket right now, good sir, because uh, next turn I'm going to demolish it. Name a more satisfying thing than attacking rockets with mechs. I don't think I don't think I can think of anything more uh, more effective or more satisfying than that. And yeah, at this point, uh, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna shoot your artillery. If you want to keep your bottlecopter around, it's gonna get shot down. So go ahead, my friend. Moving in my tank right here to threaten this rocket even further. And uh, yeah, I got my power. Not that I'm gonna use it, but I got it. And again, he's sacking one more tank right here. How many tanks have he sacked over the course of this match? It's ridiculous. So yeah, once again, I'm moving in this rocket to threaten this medium tank. He should get the hell out of there if he knows what's good for him. And yeah, once again, I'm being super aggressive here. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to entrench myself on these properties right here. Your firepower sucks anyway, so you're not going to be able to drive me away. So, boom, I attack his uh, <laughs> medium tank with my mech because why not? <laughs> and why not? So there we go. Day 18 rolls in, and uh, he should pop his power of money, and he does. Look at this rich kid, 24. Okay, it's actually not that bad anymore, but still, uh, still pretty good. He'll be able to get it next turn too, I think, because he hasn't saved up. So uh, yeah, he takes a shot. He is good at. He's doing a good job interrupting my cast, but he has no vision right now. He should have built a recon here, honestly, instead of an infantry. I don't know why he built an infantry. That was really weird. Look at that. He has no vision. He's no vision. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How is he able to shoot that thing? Okay, I need to, wait, what? I have no idea, how is he able to shoot, what? Okay, this is weird, there's something wrong here. There is a unit missing here, because he should not have vision here. I think, honestly guys, I think this is a bug with the replay. I think this is supposed to be a recon, because I seem to recall he built a recon here. This is a bug, this might correct itself. Let's just see what happens. But yeah, look at this, look at this. This is, this is definitely not an infantry, this is a recon. I thought this was weird. Uh, because he's able to see here. Actually, he's able to see here because I'm on his city. Uh, but still, look at the shot right here. This is really weird. Um, this is incredibly strange. So he's taking a shot at my tank. He's moving his own tank back. Oh, he's resupplying his rocket. That's hilarious. He's moving in his battlecopter, taking out my tank. Pretty good on him. Builds a transport. What the hell? This really puzzled me. Like, what the hell was he planning on doing here? Was he trying to go for an HQ cap? Was he? Did he misclick and build a transport instead of a bottlecopter? I don't actually know what happened here. But actually, okay, right, so he did take a shot at me. I don't know how this happened. I think this might be a UI bug, but just ignore it for now, guys. Anyway, my turn rolls in. Boom, look at that, another bottlecopter gone. Boom, look at that, another bottlecopter. How many bottlecopters have I destroyed over the course of this match? Like, eight? This is incredible. And here we go, guys. Prime Tactics roll in, and look at how good this one's gonna get, guys. Boom! Prime Tactics on a city. Medium tank goes bye-bye. Oh my god, this was this was incredibly nice. And look at that. Using my rocket movement just to go brrrr into a forest. I love doing this with Lash. Like, the amount of mobility you get on your rockets is incredible. And look at this. Just capping. Capping. Well, I will start to cap now. Uh, yeah, moving in, taking out his medium tank. And here I get a really good shot at his medium, uh, his tank as well. Taking out his transport or doing some damage to it, because why not? I'm able to shoot it down with my infantry anyway, so this is completely fine. Actually, I did not shoot it down. I'm uh, th That's kind of interesting. And there, finally, I noticed the rocket. And I'm like, oh my god, this thing has been here all along. When I initially saw it, I looked at its ammo, and I was like, okay... You know, it has six shots left, so it probably hasn't been that valuable. Little did I know that it just got freaking refueled by the APC. This is incredible, man. So yeah, look at that. Capping his comm tower with Prime Tactics up. That's- Oh, I'm an idiot. He was able to shoot at me because I was on his goddamn building. I, guys, I am so stupid. God, I've gotten like probably 20 comments about this already. I, yeah, the reason he was able to shoot me with his battleship was because I was on his freaking property. R retard mangs, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway. So uh, his turn rolls in, and look at the vision right now. Look at look at how blind he is. He has no vision whatsoever. Absolutely no vision. Should have built a recon. But, you know, he has battleships and medium tanks and rockets because he's Colin. Stupid Colin. But you can see he is really on the ropes here, though. 
Like, despite the fact that he has unlimited money. And, uh, you know, another medium tank, because why not? I'm calling. Honestly, though, he might have been able to get his gold rush, so once again, he's making the mistake of building units at the start of his turn. Never do this as Colin. Hold on on buying the units. Always get your units last, because you might get your gold rush at the end of the turn, and you don't want to pop gold rush if you don't have money. So just never do this as Colin. Make a mental note in your head to all you Colin mains out there. Never get units at the start of your turn, ever. Using his APC to protect his uh, rocket. He knows that I know where it is right now. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> You're not going to interrupt this cap. Actually, he did interrupt the cap, but it doesn't matter. Oh my god, this is just so fun to watch. So, he did uh, He did He did barely interrupt my cap. But look at my vision compared to him. It's incredible. And this time, I know there's a battleship here. I just don't give a shit. I'm like, okay. This, this battleship is just a glorified rocket at this point. I don't care. So, yeah. Finally, I start capping these properties right here. Holy shit, it took forever. But, yeah. I take down his uh, tank with my artillery. And now it's time to try and kill this transport, which I did. Using my uh, Antire here just to kill his artillery. It's trapped and pretty much useless at this point. And here I go. I got a 5 HP tank. Doesn't matter, though. Still be able to take out this rocket or make it almost useless. I'm pretty happy about that. And I'm, I'm, I'm exerting a lot of pressure on these comp towers. So he has a lot of dangerous units right here. But, the but this is also another thing with Colin, right? If he only builds expensive units like medium tanks and battleships, that means he has to use those units to interrupt caps. You see how good capturing is right now, guys? You see how important it is to have infantry to interrupt caps? Imagine if he just had like one or two or three infantry in this area, and he could have used them to interrupt the cap. Instead, he has to use rockets, battleships, and medium tanks to interrupt caps. And that is just so incredibly not valuable in his end. I'm moving in yet another rocket into yet another brilliant position right here. This is such a good position for the rocket. It's a little exposed, arguably, but if he's going to start moving his units up here, he's going to lose them. So I feel pretty confident doing this right now. I move this uh, rocket over here. I want to try and get it close to his base so I can take, like, uh, it's a really good location, honestly, because I can keep taking shots at him. But he also will, uh, he ha sadly, because he has his infantry right here, one, two, three, four, five. He does have vision in the area, so he does see it, so he can take shots at it with his battleship. So that was a little bit bad on my end. I should have waited until I was able to take down his infantry, but eh. And here, I just go, okay, nice APC, I'll take it. And still, I mean, I should... Honestly, like, it would have been a be way better move for me to move this entire down here, spot the rocket, and then move in, but I think I forgot about it at this point. So yeah. I move in my units once more. I'm keeping the pressure up at this point. I realize I got him on the ropes. And I build a medium tank of my own because why not? It's time to actually start bringing the big guns. All right, so his turn rolls in once again. He has his power ready, but because he had to spend so much money on repairs, he only has 16,000 right now, which results in a pretty lackluster uh, gold rush. He's not popping it, which is a big mistake. He should definitely pop it right away to get that extra firepower. I think he forgot. So again, another big mistake that he did. Now he's finally remembers to activate it, but he could have gotten three or four engagements with extra firepower. So at this point, he is pretty screwed though, but still, like you should still play well, even though you're on the ropes. So, but he's doing a good job interrupting my caps, although he has to use very expensive units to do so. And here, this was the money shot though, like this, like the battleship attacking my rocket here, I was really annoyed by that, because that was really good value for him. And once again, he takes out a unit, moves his rocket back to get healed. I can see why he would do this. And here, though, I get repaired because I have the base, and that results in this medium tank. So this is a good example of repairs being very good if you can get them. Like, again, you shouldn't pull your units back necessarily to get repaired, but if you can get them on the front lines, this was really nice. Because this rocket had 4 HP, it goes up to 6 HP, which gives it a lot of extra firepower against this medium tank. So I was pretty happy about that. Once again, I'm going for the capture. And, uh, yeah, look at that. Finally, I'm spotting this rocket, and I was like, oh my god, time to take this thing out. Boom. Goodbye, rocket. That rocket probably earned itself in many times over, though. So that was an insanely good rocket. So once again, I'm not letting up the pressure. I'm going for that comb tower. I'm pushing him down in the south as well. Moving this artillery around just to be annoying. Literally just to force him to spend units to scout it. I know it's dead anyway, so I'm just going to be as annoying with it as I possibly can. So, yeah. Now it's time to build the Battlecopters, because I see that he has Antire in the area, but I have a plan right now, and I think if you know anything about Lash, you, you know what's coming. You know what's coming. So, alright, so day 21 rolls in, and you can see he's really getting pressed hard. Look how little vision he has, and like, the entire map is practically dark at this point. He doesn't see these tanks, he doesn't see the rocket, he doesn't see anything. And again, this is just like, 
I mean, at this point, I guess it's too late to do anything about it, but... Keep your goddamn recons alive, man. Look at me, I still have my recons. Uh, like, I still have recons on the map. Keep your recons alive, this is so important. You don't want to waste time building recons in the late game. So... Yeah, he moves in. Can't even see my rocket right now, which is really bad for him. Uh, but he rolls in with another medium tank, which is okay. I don't know how uh, he was able to spot it because he had his infantry right there. The vision is a little bit bugged. This infantry is not displaying its vision properly. So again, lots of little UI changes that needs to be improved with Advanced Wars by Web. But I'm, I'm trusting that they're working on it. But yeah, he's moving in a medium tank. He's being, you know, he's, he's calling. He can just buy more units. It's okay. But you can see the value difference. Actually, <laughs> our value difference is actually somewhat comparable right now. Look at that, 90,000 to 94,000. Of course, I haven't built my units yet, but still. It's ridiculous how he's still able to keep up. Any other CO would have been wiped off the map by this point. Any other CO would have been crushed at this point. But Colin's still in the fight. But here I move in, and I think you know what I'm going for here. You can see what I'm working towards here. So yeah, once again, this rocket just shooting down yet another Colin medium tank. Is that the third medium tank I've destroyed so far? Probably is, yeah. And here I take on this artillery, not knowing there's a tank here. I probably should have realized it was coming. I should have moved away. But it's it's fine. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm continuing to... I'm not letting up on the pressure. I want this comm tower. I'm going to try and get this comm tower. Like, at this point, I am all in on the comm tower. I want to take away... So I'm even... I'm, and I, Notice how I'm always keeping my units on properties right here. As much as I can. Always go for properties on Lash. I always want to go for properties anyway, but with Lash is even more important because she gets firepower from it too. So again, his turn rolls in. He's completely blind as always. He pops his gold rush. 35,000, pretty good honestly. Like, that's a good, that's a good clump of money that he just generated right there. Builds a, a battlecopter, not very, pretty predictable, but I'm going to be able to get an untire down there in time. So I'm not, not, I'm not really that scared. He's doing a good job interrupting the comm tower. He's, he's doing a, you know, he's, he's playing really well here. And once again, this battleship, like right now, he's actually sort of pushing me back. But he gets himself trapped there. That's pretty big. Should have, again, only building like three medium tanks. He's just building expensive units right now. Recons, my good friend, Colin. Recons, you need vision. Look at this. Look at this. He can't see shit. Like, what good are medium tanks if they can't see anything? This is like probably what, like, he, he really needed to just get a... Uh, I don't know, he just, at this point, he just didn't have the basis to build all the units that he wanted to build. And look at this right now, yeah, you see what I'm doing. You see what I'm doing here, ladies and gentlemen. You know what's coming. Boom! Another medium tank into the meat grinder. What is this, his fifth medium tank, I guess? I don't know. Oh, boom! So, okay, that was actually just a 2 HP artillery, never mind. So, at this point, he should have realized that there's something strange going on. Because I have my prime tactics ready, and I'm not popping it. Now, why is that? Did I forget I had it? No. Any player, if you see... Okay, so here's a little bit of an advice if you're playing against Lash. If she does not pop Prime Tactics on the turn that she gets it, and there is an exposed HQ on the map, she is saving that for an HQ cap. So just know this. There is zero reason for me not to pop my Prime Tactics right now. I have tons of units on properties, but I'm not popping it. Here we go, Battlecopter coming in, taking a shot at the medium tank. I'm just setting up for the HQ cap maneuver here. You guys know it's coming. And boom. Another medium tank. What is this, the sixth medium tank that he's thrown away? Again, man, call, call in players. Why are they so reckless? Protect your units, man. They're not... You may have a lot of money, but you don't have infinite money. You will run out at some point. And here, I just... I, I know he's gonna start spamming Battlecopters again, so I'm just, okay, fine. I'm just gonna build on tire then. Just have it your way, Colin. Have it your way. So, his turn rolls in. He takes out my on tire. Good on him, but, like, is this Battlecopter just gonna be stuck shooting on infantry at this point? So, not really great for him. Um, so yeah, moving in with medium tanks. He has a little bit more vision now, thanks to the mountain. But as soon as he loses this infantry, bam, he's blind again. He's not gonna have anything. And again, like, he sees that I have prime tactic, and he sees that I didn't pop it. He should have been rushing towards his HQ at this point. Like, it is, like, look, he has no vision around his HQ. Like, he should have known something was coming at this point. And he is sending his tank over here, but look, he's only seeing a 3 HP infantry and a battlecopter. He doesn't see the mech, and he doesn't see the infantry, so he doesn't know they're there. So he built some Antire, good on him. His battleships, still getting some pretty good engagements. Like, I will I will give it to him. This battleship was actually, it ended up being pretty good. Even though I laughed a little bit when I saw it initially, it actually ended up being pretty good. So it's my turn. Now here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. Here it comes. Boom! Prime Tactics. 
Alright, here we go. I send this infantry into the mountain just to scout ahead to see that there's no units. Take a shot at him, why not? Boom. Here you go. This infantry right now has a 90% bonus to defense. Four terrain stars from the HQ gets doubled to eight. That's 80%. And then you get a 10% baseline from your power. So 90% extra infantry defense. So in order to interrupt, in, in order to take one HP of this infantry, you need to deal as much damage as you would have dealt to one shot it, basically. You need you need to do so much damage to this right now. But I'm not done, ladies and gentlemen. I got two battlecopters here. Let's go. Boom. <laughs> There you go. Wonderful. I mean, he has an anti here, but it doesn't matter. So, uh, yeah, that was, um, I was very happy about this. I was like, GG, Colin. Now I got him. So, but just for good measure, you know, even though I'm pretty confident I'm going to win this, I'm still going to take engagements, take advantage of my superpower as much as possible. You know, move my units around. I'm still playing somewhat careful. I'm not going to throw away units. I'm not Colin player. I actually care about my units. We all know Lash is, Lash is really kind and considerate. She loves her units, right? She would never throw away her troops. That's not how she works, right? Yeah, I get myself trapped a little surprised by that. So it's his turn. And he goes, oh shit, that's an HQ cap. But of course, he has no vision. <laughs> he needs to use a medium tank to scout. How fucking how funny is that? He, d he has no vision. Look at this. He's completely blind. What good does medium tanks do if they're blind? So he moves in his medium tank, and I was so mad about this. He got a good luck roll. Oh, I was so mad about this. I was so mad about this. I would have had him. I would have taken the HQ. I, honestly, like, I, I probably need to go back and do some calculations, but I'm pretty sure he got a very good luck roll here. Because I don't think he normally should have been able to do 1 HP of damage to me with 90% extra defense, but... Hey. So yeah, he has to scout with his medium tank, ladies and gentlemen. So here, I was really upset. Because I realized, shit, I'm not going to get him anyway. Uh, however, you may notice that this match has been going on for quite a while. It's day 24, and there's a 25-day turn limit. So, and I have an income lead of four properties. So, even though he does a pretty valiant job pushing me back. And you can see how resilient Colin is, man. Like, the power of just having a lot of money is so strong in Advanced Wars. It's ridiculous. So, but just look at my vision compared to his, it's crazy. Yeah, shooting down another Battlecopter, why not? At this point, I realized... So at this point, I didn't actually realize how many properties I had compared to him, but I know I knew that I had to have more than him because I have, I have this property. So I realized that, you know, I was kind of worried I might be getting a draw because, again, you don't see the amount of properties that your opponent has at this point. So I was a little nervous here. I was a little nervous that a draw might be rolling in. Uh, but... You know, I had a massive present compared to him, and you can see that I have four more properties than him right now. So, yeah, even no matter what he does here, it's not going to be enough to win. We're on day 25 right now. So, yeah, the final turn rolls in, and to his credit, he is able to interrupt my cap. He pops one final gold rush there. And, yeah, he's just moving his units, trying his best. Like, he builds more medium tanks, because why the hell not? You know, he has the money for it. Still doesn't have any visions, though. Seriously, just build recons, man. What, what is wrong with you? Just build recons. And yeah, he's doing a valiant job. Builds another medium tank. I mean, this is just disgusting. Oh, I guess there's one more turn after this. Oh, I'm actually a little surprised. I thought... Really? Pretty sure I won now, because it's day 25. Yeah, okay, I just, I literally just have to refresh. So yeah, day 25 rolls in, and I win via capture. Even if we didn't have a time limit, I'm fairly confident I would have been able to take him. Although, you can actually see that right now, he has a 10,000 value lead over me. Of course, I will bridge that as soon as I build more units, but... Man, Colin, it's ridiculous how strong he is. Like, you can really see, like, this player... I don't know what happened there, like, I think... I think it just went back one turn or something like that. But yeah, I mean, like, this is just ridiculous. I mean, this this player made mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. He's, he threw his units into my meat grinders like they were just broken toys. I mean, again, this is how Colin players tend to play because they're just so used to having a million troops. Guys, if you are a Colin main and you like playing Colin, you should still treat your units with care. You should still try and play like they're valuable. And this is one of the reasons why I think you shouldn't be a call-in main, because honestly, it just teaches you bad habits. It teaches you bad habits. I actually am of the firm belief that people who don't play Colin become better players than people who do. Because when you play Colin, you're just used to having a million money, and you just don't care about your units. You just throw them away like they're worthless. So if you're trying to play games not as Colin, 
you just gonna end up losing because you've not, not been taught good habits. Your units are super precious. You should keep them alive as much as possible. You shouldn't move them into range of indirects. You should take care, build them up, overwhelm your opponent with uh, with a numbers advantage. Don't be like this guy. Don't throw your battlecopters away. Don't throw your medium tanks away. Uh, be more careful with Colin. And for the love of God, always, always, always build units as the last thing you do at the end of the turn. Never start your turn building units. It's going to hurt your, your gold rush game. Uh, again, just because Colin is an insanely broken commander doesn't mean you shouldn't play him well. So I will say, though, if this guy was any like a little bit more skilled, he would have crushed me easily. This was an uphill battle, even though this was clearly a lower skill level player. Uh, it was still a really tough match, and I really enjoyed it. And Jack of Clubs, uh, I hope you don't take offense to me ramp like criticizing your play style. Uh, I, I think it was a really entertaining match, and it was really fun to play against you. And I don't mean to be negative. I'm just I just like to teach people what to avoid in terms of mistakes. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is probably my longest replay commentary yet. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if there's any other COs you want me to play or play against. Uh, I'm getting tons of challenges every day. I will say though, uh, because I'm very limited with my inbox, it can only have 50 messages. I continually have to delete messages and I don't always get time to read them all. So I am really sorry about that. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a like and a comment if you enjoyed it. As always, my name is Inmengs and I shall see you guys next time. Bye bye.